Welcome back to Sutra Storytime. Today we're going to talk about John Hunter. I mean, I've enjoyed reading about John Hunter and there's a lot to learn. Some things are good, some things are not. But we can always learn something. Um, I can't help myself, I gotta tell you, I'm picking a four-row monocle suture. And that's because what I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to do some practice on subcuticular sutures. And you can watch and listen and we can have fun together. So back to John Hunter, you know, he talked in the, the previous episode about catgut sutures and that he got all the, kind of a lot of the credit for catgut sutures. But what actually he's really known for is that he did a lot of work on anatomy and dissection of human bodies and he actually added a lot of knowledge that we can get to know that we actually use today in surgery. So that's why he's called the father of scientific surgery. Now what are the things that he did? A little bit of a brief uh, background on John Hunter. You know, his, his older brother, William, actually was already a physician and a surgeon when John Hunter actually joined him in 1748. And he just joined him because he had left the military and he wanted to help him with, um, with, with his work. But soon enough, of course, John Hunter showed that he has a talent and he's, um, that he's got a knack for these things. And he, just, he became just as good as his brother. And then he started doing surgeries independently and he started to do his own dissections and his own anatomy. So what are the things that I learned from John Hunter? A few, a few of the things that, that, um, that I came across is, number one, he was very devoted to surgery and very devoted to learning more about the human body. He didn't do it all in the correct way. Today we know that both William and John Hunter actually collected a, a huge collection of animal organs as well as human organs and human bodies that actually are found in, uh, in a museum today. But let me tell you about something that you can tell me if it was worth it or not. So you know, in, in, the, 17, in the late 1700s, the best way that anyone could get a human body was not by body donation for science, because not a lot of people actually believed in science. So they would, they would rely on grave robbers to get these, uh, these corpses, and then they would pay money for it. <clears throat> because John Hunter knew the value of what each body can add to his collection or what it can add to his knowledge of science, he picked the one person that did not want to give him his body. Let's talk about Charles Byrne. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Charles Byrne, Charles Byrne. Anyway, so Charles was actually someone who was known at the end of, the, at the end of his life of being a giant or also called the Irish giant because he had a benign tumor in his pituitary gland, something that we today know as having an adenoma that secretes growth hormone, and he had acromegaly, or gigantism. So he, by the end of his, by the end of his life, he grew to be seven foot seven, about 2.3 meters tall, and he actually made a living towards the end of his life from being the Irish giant. But before he died, he said that he does not want anyone to actually get his body for science because he didn't want to be used as an exhibit. But guess who knew about that? John Hunter. So Charles wanted said that he wants he wanted to be buried at sea so that no one can use his body. Before they could even bury him, John Hunter had paid someone to take his body and bring it to him. The last thing I could see is that he paid five hundred pounds for his body and he actually paid his friends to bring his body in instead of burying him. Uh, flash for, uh, fast forward to our days today, uh, the body of Charles Byrne was actually sitting in a museum in the uh, Leicester Square Museum. However, the, the, uh, the board that was renovating the museum actually made a decision that uh, after renovation, the body will not be posted based on the, uh, based on the wishes of Charles Byrne before he died. One thing I learned from John Hunter is it's good to be devoted to surgery, and I think a lot of us are, but we've come to see that what people deserve, what we do, we do it for, for people, right? And respecting their wishes is really important. So that's one thing I learned. I have another thing that I learned, but I think I'm running out of suture. But I'll just say it real quick. Uh, you know, being nice 
is really important. Surgeons are known to not always being nice. I promise you I'm really nice. Um, so John Hunter was not a nice person. He had a lot of anger issues. And interestingly enough, he dissected a lot of bodies, but he did not come to discover the problems with coronary artery disease. And one time he was having an, a big argument with the board of trustees for the medical school about the admission of someone, also a really fun story. And then he stepped outside and then he died of a heart attack. And that was probably one of the very few things that he actually discussed or came across in his anatomy. It's a little bit of an interesting thing, but what I learned, what I can tell you is always be nice because you know, kindness can take you a long way. And in medicine especially, you always need a lot of friends.